So a few of you mentioned that the pushing in the Giro team time trial was technically against the rules. Why weren't Movistar and FDJ disqualified? Maybe we should start by looking at the Tour of California. <laughs> As you may know, the UCI has rules about sprinting, too, which refer to not always apparent lanes. But in no imaginable universe could I see this sprint, where Mark Cavendish moves from one side of John Degenkolb to the other before nipping him on the line, as not violating that rule. The UCI also has rules against on-bike cameras, at least until the announcement of last week's limited derogation, but fortunately Giant Shimano wasted no time getting them onto team bikes, thus giving us a lovely inside view of that very same sprint from Tour of California Stage 1. But now I'm thinking maybe the whole point of this exercise was to get someone to write an article about how John Degenkolb lost the race because he had a bike camera mounted on it. Just look at that teeny margin of victory. It had to be the camera, right? Why ban something if you can simply marginal gains it out of existence? I should point out that cameras have been commonplace in amateur races for years, and if you are an amateur racer, you might want to consider checking out the Feliciana Classic Road Race, hosted by this week's t-shirt sponsor, Go Race Cycling Club. They're a local amateur team out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, thus the French spelling of go, and have over 70 members, including one 13-year-old who's already winning Cat 3 races. There's a link to a flyer for their event in the description. If you are, in fact, 13 years old, it means you've never had a UCI hour record set during your lifetime. To change that, the UCI has decided to make setting a new record really, really easy. Like, literally, the record would have been set if the new rules had been in effect last fall by former pro Colby Pierce, who wasn't even that impressed with his own performance. Not that the UCI would count that, of course, because it was a new rules record set while the old rules were still in effect. Are we seeing a pattern here yet? Though I will say it's nice to see the UCI has moved on from such rules tricks as picking a hematocrit limit of such ridiculousness that only the most brazen doper would ever have to risk crossing it. Maybe it's time for the UCI to move on to more practical rulemaking decisions on things like courses. Certainly the Ice Capades mayhem of Tuesdays and Thursdays Giro stages didn't really live up to the standard of safe. I don't really have a problem with the seemingly arbitrary application of neutralization on these stages, but it would just be nice to see people racing on a surface that would let them compete in a variety of different weather conditions, where keeping upright was more a factor of handling skill and positioning than simple dumb luck. I know a certain car incident in last week's Women's Tour of Britain might make some people shoehorn that into the unsafe category as well, but I didn't really find it that different from the heads-up racing you'd find on any flattish multi-day stage race. The Panna is a pretty good example. It's also important to realize that the incident took place during the neutral start of the stage. So one, it was illegal for riders to be in front of the car like that, and two, when was the last time a men's race was so nervous at the beginning of the stage? Catching out Vos and a handful of other contenders on stage three's crosswinds was really the only shot Wolves Domans and Lizzie Armitstead had of overall victory. Everyone was super keyed up, waiting for them to drop the hammer, and they did, but unfortunately the course really didn't play along. Too many sheltered road sections for them to definitively split the field. The women's peloton is currently at the multi-day tour of Chongming Island, which leads into this weekend's World Cup, also confusingly called the tour of Chongming Island. Maybe the UCI should work on some names rules or something. Or maybe step up their regulations about organizers having dead websites, which is why I can't really tell you anything about the race. But for all my concerns about nuanced rules and diverse conditions at the Giro, I'm still not sure everything needs to be Tour of california eyes either. Yes, I love the Tour Tracker, and it's really cool to have European pros in America relaxing on wide, safe roads. But I also can't think of a European race with a Cat 2 climb 20k from the finish where I'd expect 190 pounds of Taylor Finney to break away and win the stage solo. Like with today's pass and Mount Diablo, I feel like a lot of the climbs in California really have had the selectiveness ground out of them. The resulting competition, however safe and well-organized, still feels kind of like a warm-up race. Still, that's done little to stop the tour's ascendancy, and if I'm a pro watching at home, I'm pretty sure I know which race I want to be at next year. And the colossal attention heaped upon the race by the US media, speaking to an audience that now represents more top-tier teams than any other country, probably doesn't hurt either. I'm Cosmo Catalano, and that was The Week in Bike.